Good day. My name is Chabe Lloyd. And grade sevens, welcome to term four. Today we'll begin our lessons in, for term four with relationship of the sun to the earth. So grade seven, without any waste of time, let's begin. For my presentation outline, we are going to explore the solar energy and the earth seasons. We're also going to explore solar energy and life on earth. And we'll conclude with stored solar energy. Grade sevens, by the end of this lesson, which is, which is going to be cut into three units, but by the end of it, in totality, you're supposed to be able to explain and describe night and day, recall information about seasons. Remember, we have already started in grade six with this information, so it's a recap. By the end of this lesson as well, you need to be able to describe the tilt of the earth. Now, here are some few scientific vocab. These words we are going to encounter as we continue with our lesson. Radiate, this is a familiar word by now because remember in term three, we have already discussed radiation. And we said it's the transfer of heat through electromagnetic waves. Now to radiate, or the process of radiation, in a simple term we say it's a giving of energy in the form of waves or particles. Axis is an imaginary line that passes through the center of the earth from the north to the south pole. Rotate, to turn about a central point in this case, the Earth on its own axis. Orbit, path of one object in space around another. Solar energy, energy from the sun. Solstice, it's a Latin word, which is a combination of two, the word sol. The first half of it, sol, meaning sun, and sister, meaning standing still. So the combined definition we say solstice is the date on which the sun's rays fall perpendicularly onto the earth's surface at the furthest distance north or south of the equator. Equinox, dates on which day and night are of equal length. Equator, an imaginary line that divides the Earth into two equal halves or hemisphere. So these words we are going to encounter as we continue and images will be given for a better understanding. For our introduction, I want you to look at this picture. It's a picture of the sun, a close look at our sun. Now, the sun is our closest star. It is a huge ball of very hot gas in space, which radiates heat and light in all directions. All planets, including our home, which is planet Earth, travel around the sun in its orbit. As we will see in this chapter, the sun is incredibly important. One, it provides us with light and warmth and its apparent motion. I want you to note that apparent motion across our skies causes day and night and the passage of the seasons. Now, in Earth's rotation, before we explore Earth's rotation, let's start off with seeing what you can remember learning about day and night in grade six. Here is a table of our questions. Let's begin. In which direction will you have to look to see the sun rising? In which direction? Will you have to look to see the sun rising? 
Question number two. In which direction will you look to see the sun setting? Question number three. At midnight, where is the sun in relation to your position on the earth? And then the last question, how long does it take the earth to complete rotation on its axis? I hope you have written your answers, grade sevens on a page. So let's look at those answers. We are saying, in which direction will you have to look to see the sun rising is to the east? And which direction will you look? to see the sun setting to the west, and how long does it take the earth to complete one rotation on its axis, 24 hours or one day? If you follow the path of the sun during the day, you will see that it rises in the east and sets in the west. The sun reaches its highest point at noon or midday. Grade seven, let's look at these pictures this picture to demonstrate what we are saying above. The sun rises in the east, and then as the time moves, the sun reaches its highest point at noon or 12 p.m., and the sun sets in the west. Continuing with Earth's rotation, in grade six, you have already established that the sun does not really move. It just appears to move because the earth is turning on its own axis. So, it is the earth's rotation that causes the apparent movement of the sun across the sky during the day. So, to elaborate more on this, Let's watch the following video. What causes the repeating pattern of day and night? In space, the Earth moves in different ways. One way the Earth moves is by spinning on its axis. An axis is an imaginary line that runs through the Earth's center. This spinning movement on its axis is called a rotation. As it rotates, part of the Earth is facing the Sun. This part of the Earth is lit up and experiences daytime. At the same time, the opposite side of the Earth is facing away from the Sun. This part of the Earth is in darkness and it is nighttime. It takes the Earth 24 hours to complete one rotation. The repeating rotation of the Earth is why we experience the daily pattern of day and night. Here's a cool fact! The planets in the solar system rotate about their axis at different speeds. This means the length of a day on each planet is different. One day on Jupiter takes just 10 Earth hours. One day on Venus takes 243 Earth days. I think I'll call it a day now. See you later. Okay, now let's move on. I hope you have enjoyed Don't the video. Don't forget to subscribe. So let's just continue by saying, so now you can see how the Earth's rotation about its axis causes day and night. Here is a perfect picture. So according to the video, you have the lit part and the part that is lit is the one facing the sun. Remember we said the earth is rotating on its axis. So we have at the center what we call the circle of illumination. So 
When one half of the earth is lit up by the sun, the other half is in darkness, meaning that other half is at night and then the other half is during the day, is experiencing the day. It is daytime in the lit half and nighttime in the dark half. Continuing still on Earth's rotation, as the Earth spins, you move from light to shadow and back to light again over the course of one day or 24 hours. During the night, you cannot see the sun move across the sky. But if you look carefully, you will notice that the stars move across the sky just like the sun does. Again, it takes the earth 24 hours to make one complete turn called a rotation on its own axis. And we've already told you that the earth's day is 24 hours long. Now let's move to the earth's revolution. I know this the, both these words start with R and they can be confusing. So we have concluded discussing the Earth's rotation, the movement or the turning of planet Earth on its own axis. Now let's explore Earth's revolution. The Earth revolves around the sun in an almost perfect cycle, completing one revolution or one orbit around the sun or 365 and a quarter days to be precise. As the earth revolves around the sun, it also rotates or spins on its axis at the same time. So I want you to, to imagine that in your head. Remember we started saying the earth rotates on its own axis and then when it revolves around the sun, it does not stop spinning. So both motions are happening at the same time. The earth is rotating on its own at the same time it revolves around the sun. Now, let's watch a video to explain and have a picture of what revolution that is happening at the same time as rotation it looks like. Like other planets of the solar system, the Earth moves in two different ways. One is called rotation and the other is called revolution. Rotation is the movement of the Earth on its own axis. Rotate means to turn, so the Earth turns around a slightly inclined imaginary line that joins the two poles called the axis. Do you know how long it takes to make a complete turn? It takes 24 hours to make one rotation. Think about it for a second. One day day and night together lasts 24 hours too. So the movement of rotation causes day and night. Interesting, right? Now let's see the movement of revolution. As you can see in the pictures, the Earth goes around the Sun in an elliptical orbit. That might sound a little strange, but if you look, you'll see it's simply the journey that the Earth makes around the Sun. Do you know how long it takes the Earth to make a complete revolution around the Sun? Well, it takes 365 days, exactly one year. This revolution movement is what makes the spring with its colorful flowers. The hot summer full of fun the autumn when leaves fall from the trees to the ground and the cold and frosty winter. 
So let's remember the two kinds of movement that the Earth makes. There is rotation, which is the Earth turning around itself, causing day and night, which lasts exactly 24 hours, the same as a whole day. And there is revolution, which is the Earth traveling around the Sun, which takes 365 days and causes the seasons. So now you know the movements of the Earth. Goodbye, everyone. Presentation. Now, from that video, what we have seen so far is the fact that the Earth revolves around the Sun in an almost perfect circle, completing one revolution orbit around the Sun per year, or 365 and a quarter days to be precise. So on the video, we also saw that as the Earth revolves around the Sun, it also rotates or spins on its axis at the same time. Now, let's look at our solar system. At the center of this picture, you can see the Sun. And around, you see the lines that we call them orbits. Now, grade sevens, I have a classwork for you. Look at this picture and try to answer the following questions. Number one, name the eight planets starting with the one closest to the sun. Name the eight planets starting with the one closest to the sun. So on your classwork book or the, your notebook, please write the order of your eight planets, starting with the one closest to the sun. Okay, grade sevens. The second question, which planet is the furthest away from the sun? Let's look at our picture again. Okay. Question number three. Which planet is closest to the sun? Which planet is closest to the sun? Okay, let's move to the fourth question. Which planet, according to you, Grade Sevens, will be the hottest? Which planet will be the hottest? Let's go back to the picture. Now, the last question. Which planet will be the coldest? Which planet will be the coldest? Okay, grade sevens, let's start with the first question so that you can check your answers. We said, please name the eight planets starting with the one closest to the sun. Question number two, which planet is the furthest away from the sun? Question number three, which planet is closest to the sun? Question number four, which planet will be the hottest? The last question, which planet will be the coldest? Let's go back to our picture so that you can look at your answers for the last time. Okay, grade sevens, I hope you have answered all the questions. Now let's discuss the answers. 
For question number one, which name the eight planet start planets? You start with the one closest to the sun. Your answers are in the following order. Mercury is number one, followed by Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. Answer for number two is Neptune. Answer for number three, Mercury. The answer for number four, Mercury. And our last answer, the planet that will be the coldest is Neptune. Great sevens, I hope you got most of them correct. Now, with this information, I hope we have come to the end of this lesson. I hope you have enjoyed this lesson. But now, we are going to continue again so that all our objectives are met. So this information is enough for today. Until we meet again, grade 7s, goodbye.